I'm putting down a uh, an ice and water barrier, the entire roof, um, approximately five thousand square foot. Uh, okay, so so I'm going to stop you there because I'm going to discourage you from doing that. I, I, I'm going to recommend that you not put the water and ice on the entire roof. Um, I would put it on as code dictates for, you know, a, a foot above your overhang. So you generally two layers uh, of water and ice, but we're going to be happier with your, your end product if you don't put and stick down. And that's part of it is putting the adhesive down on the entire thing. Um, we, we want your roof, if it gets wet, to be able to dry to the outside. If there's any moisture that gets to it, we want it to be able to dry to the outside. If you put that water and ice on and seal that, um, that's going to make it hard to do. If any moisture gets under that, it's going to trap it, it's going to hold it, it seals it in. And so I talked about this gaff um, uh, uh, deck armor that is a breathable underlayment, it kind of almost like, and don't quote me on this, but it's kind of like Tyvek for your roof. Um, it, it's it's an, an, an armor, it's a underlayment that will allow vapor through it and allow some, some air movement. And so that's, that's gonna be our recommendation to you. Now, uh, again, depending on your climate, depending on your, your particular circumstances and what I would recommend on that is that you talk to your regional sales manager specifically about your location and have them do a little research for you on, on your location. Maybe going with a cold roof is the right thing, but I would, under any circumstances, I would discourage water and ice on the whole, on the whole roof. The, the other aspect to that um, is down the line when you need to uh, re-roof the, the building, with, when you have water and ice glued down to the whole works, it does damage to the OSB as you're trying to get it off. Um, that stuff sticks like mad, right? Um, which is a good thing while you want it to stick, but when you want to remove it, it's it's really uh, can be an, a, a pain. And so now you don't want to damage that top sheet of OSB because that's part of your structure. So that would be my my recommendation to you, Joe. What do you what would you like to add? Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> First off, um, I would, Mike, I'd direct you to our, our website on the, the technical bulletin page. Um, technical bulletin 11 talks about um, roofs and the, the idea that John just mentioned. Uh, we need to be able to have the interior OSB, if it gets wet, dry to the interior. The exterior OSB dry to the outside if it gets wet. If you follow your steel roof manufacturer's suggestion or requirement of putting down ice and water shield, as John said, that material has a low perm rating, meaning that water vapor does not work its way through that material. Should the exterior OSB skin of the SIP panel get wet, it will stay wet until it deteriorates, and then it will no longer be there to get wet. So don't use the ice and water shield the way they're suggesting. What most metal roofing manufacturers, the reason they require the peel, um, ice and water or peel and stick membranes to be applied over the deck is their metal systems leak. And it's the ice and water shield underneath with the low perm rating that keeps the water out from the roof assembly. So in the doc, the technical bulletin, um, it talks about that drying. So a suggested way to deal with the two suggestions that I have with you, and I can send you um, an email that, that outlines this, just let Don know and I'll, I'll get it to her so she can get it to you. But one suggested way is you put the, the GAF um, deck armor down over the top of the SIP that way it's protecting the OSB of the SIP. Then you would lay um, strips of, of one by material, two by material, so that you create an airspace, resheet the roof with another layer of sec seven sixteenths, and then put the peel and stick membrane on that 
that the metal roofing manufacturers are requiring, and then they can fasten directly into that. Should the roof need to be replaced down the road, you can peel the ice and water shield off, um, replace any OSB that's damaged, and you're not damaging the structure of the SIP itself. It's an expensive way to go. As John indicated, it is a cold roof system um, in snow country that does, that also helps mitigate any ice damming that would occur um, from that melting of the snow due to solar effects on the outside. Second option that one could use, and I just found this the other day, um, actually Mandy had a customer that brought it to us, Delta, um, it's Delta Tria, I believe, or Terra, I forget right off the top of my head, it's made by Dorkin, Casella Dorkin. And it's sort of a, it's a breathable underlayment with a Brillo pad, a plastic Brillo pad type material attached to it so that it acts as a spacer for the metal. Um, should condensation get underneath the, the metal and drip down onto the underlayment, it can then run down and out. And then it's breathable in the sense that should the OSB get wet, it can dry. I don't know what the cost of that material is, um, but that's another option from that standpoint. So I can get you that information through Don afterward if you'd like, but those are my suggestions from that standpoint. 